Mental health with an India lens. Real stories, real conversation, real talk. Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of the Health Collective Talks. I'm Amrita Tripathi and really excited to welcome today two incredible speakers, folks with lived experience. Many of you know them from their work uh, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce them to you. We have joining us, if I can work this out, Arjun, who is a um, counseling psychologist from Hisar in Haryana. Arjun has completed his psych master's in psychology. This is back in 2022. And he's written two books on mental health. He's currently working, Arjun, with a focus on men's mental health. Yeah. Quite unusual. Um, you're also the founder of My Intuition. So you work with students um, and, and look at psychological aspects of that as well. So really, really happy to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, let me try and get on. Yes, we did it. Let us introduce or reintroduce rather Shubrata Prakash, who's an officer with the Indian Revenue Service, the author of the book, The D Word, A Survivor's Guide to Depression, which came out several years ago, Shubrata, and actually was one of the first books with an India lens when it comes to lived experience. So huge congratulations again on that. You've been a really vociferous mental health advocate, lots of contributor to the Health Collective and our book, Real Stories of Dealing with Depression. Um, and you talk a lot about depression, but also living with ADHD. And you've been a sort of, uh, sounding board for a lot of people as well around us. Yeah, I, I do, Abrita. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me uh, on the show today. And I'm really happy, I keep saying, is much easier than talking about my job. So... <laughs> Although, although this is, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's more of a personal challenge than the other thing. Of course, you know, and I do, um, I do want to tell those of you who watch this later, um, you know, on the Health Collective, we have collected about 500 stories of mental health with an India lens, you know, especially centering around lived experience, which is so important. Um, Shubrata is one of those people who keeps telling us she doesn't think or she wishes for the day it wasn't, uh, you know, you didn't need courage or you didn't need to be brave to talk about these things. But let's be honest, um, Shobir is still India. It is 2023. Even though this month is now also Mental Health Awareness Month, which is um, uh, not just October, but this is also one of the months being celebrated. Uh, we know these are conversations that need to happen every day, not just for these kind of symbolic moments. Let me ask you a little bit about what you want to share about your own mental health journey at this point. I know you've had very many conversations and you've been in the media a lot also raising awareness. What would you like to share about your own journey at this stage? Uh, for, for anyone who doesn't know me and who's uh, watching me speak for the first time, uh, I had um, a long and severe episode of depression, which uh, was from 2012 to 2016. Uh, diagnosed in 2011, but you know, uh, it was it was kind of up and down. I had depression, then I didn't. Then I had this longish episode, and um, then I got better. But then I had another mild to moderate episode last year, which I'm just coming out of right now. And um, it's really difficult to point pinpoint exactly where it all started, but probably it started postpartum, even longer back than 2011. But since I wasn't diagnosed, so I wouldn't like to go there. And I also have anxiety disorder. I live with it every day. I don't know where the next trigger for an anxiety attack or a panic attack is going to come from. And I also have uh, been diagnosed with ADHD a couple of years back, uh, adult ADHD, although it was suspected for some time, but a formal uh, diagnosis came about a couple of years back. And um, I am right now at that stage of my life where uh, having had um, repeated episodes of depression and um, living with ADHD. ADHD actually is not a mental illness for those who don't know, but it's a, a neurodevelopmental disorder. It's it's a different ki kind of wiring of the brain. So that's something that, you know, that's that's just there. It's, it's, it's a different, uh, you know, a way of wiring of the brain and also anxiety. So with all of these conditions, sometimes it's really difficult for me to distinguish one from the other. And uh, that's when I've decided to, you know, not go into the, let us say the labels and just stick with whatever symptoms I have, address them at the point that that's happening. And so far, so good. I've been managing uh, that time between 2012 and 2016. Those four years, I was not functional for most parts of it. I mean, it was it was really difficult. 
but uh, lessons learned and now and with all the therapy that I did, uh, this time when I had this episode, my latest one last year, uh, which kind of I'm just coming out of now, uh, that uh, was a little easier to spot and I was functional through all of it. In fact, I was um, handling two, three different charges at work. Even now I'm handling two, three different charges at work at a different workplace. So this has been my journey so far. And I wrote the book, The D Word, which Amrita just spoke about, um, which is uh, a little bit of, which has a little bit of information about uh, depression and also uh, a little bit of description of my own journey. Of course, it was published in 2016. So the book and my journey um, yeah. doc documents like till there. And thereafter, I have just been talking about mental health. My, the, the ad, ad, I've been advocating quite passionately for awareness as well as uh, better treatments for people and also um, getting some community support for it. And I'm hoping that, as Amrita said, it, there, there will be a day when one wouldn't have to be brave to talk about mental health or talk about their own lived experiences. Thank you so much for that, Shubhata. And you know, um, Arjun, one of the things what I really appreciate about both of you is that one, that courage, of course, uh, that day has not yet come when it's not, it doesn't require one to be brave. You both have been so um, courageous in sharing your stories that it actually allows other people uh, that window, right? It, it, it helps create that kind of safe space for other people to also share. It, it helps other people know they're not alone. And I know both of you would have benefited from the same if you had known as well, uh, you know, you were not alone in your journey. I do want to ask you about your um, what you want to share at this stage, Arjun, when it comes to your own mental health journey. And of course, anyone watching, we do want to tell you that there are resources and help available in case you're feeling triggered, uh, in case this makes you feel distressed, please feel free to come back to this or just let us know. Um, Arjun, over to you on a little bit of your journey. Yeah, so hi, everyone. My journey with uh, clinical depression started in 2015. I think it's around eight years now, and I was just a 17-year-old boy at the time. And I was just so certain that I cannot be depressed because depression happens to weak people that I genuinely did not cooperate with any of my doctors or therapists for 18 months. And damn, did I suffer because of that. So that continued till around 2017 when I ended up actually accepting that this is something that's uh, normal. It's an illness and it's not something that's happening to me because I'm weak or I am um, I deserve to go through this. And I think ever since then, I've been more mindful about what uh, emotions I'm going through and um, the support system that I have around me. So uh, those episodes, you know, as Suprata just mentioned, they come back every now and then. They come back with a lot of force. But now, um, um, at this age, I think I have better support systems and better management systems to understand that what's happening to me is normal. It's not something that's uh, my fault. And if I reach out to the right people, then I can actually get through this without any repercussions or any serious harm. So I think that's helped me a lot. Um, I think that's where I am right now. Just uh, thankful that I have the right people around me right now and uh, hoping that we won't need them for a lot more in the future. Thank you so much for sharing that, Arjun. And you know, you, you're a writer yourself. Uh, you decided to go and study psychology. You've got your master's degree. You're practicing as a psychologist. So I do think it's really critical to also highlight that, you know, from all that I've been following of uh, your journey and Shubrata's journey, you both are using social media really well. Um, I do think it's really commendable that neither of you is actually sugarcoating or putting that kind of positive filter or whatever that toxic positivity we talk about. You both are very honest that there are ups and downs. This is a journey. Um, Arjun, let me ask you a little bit about what are some of the caveats, though, when you have people who are following you on social, and of course, they think that they know you, but what are some of the caveats we should be aware of um, in terms of, you know, Insta psychology or pop psychology that comes across on social? Anything you'd want to flag? Uh, I think the most important thing is that the experiences that I share are my own, and a lot of different people will have very different experiences than mine. So the things that I'm sharing, things that help me, they help me because, uh, well, they work, not because they are going to help everyone. So I keep it a point to make sure that I add this caveat to all my uh, content about what helped me, that this helped me, this might not work for you, this did not work for me, it might work for you. And with a lot of the psychologists as they are right now, I think there's a lot of uh, wisdom uh, that they end up uh, spouting instead of you know actual evidence-based treatment. So. I just suggest that uh, be mindful of what you're consuming. Be mindful that 
people are coming from their own experiences and um, it's not necessary that one thing will fix everyone so uh, do what works for you and be open to different possibilities as well that's fair and uh, shubhrata for you in terms of what you have seen on social from what you've shared and what you think people should keep in mind uh one of the things that i always keep harping on is that let us just separate um you know clinical depression which is like a, an illness it's mental illness from a normal kind of sad- sadness it's it's not the garden variety of sadness anyone can feel sad on a day and um i believe uh, i see a lot of in fact i've started terming it the motivation industry i see a lot of these motivational uh, quotes and speakers and uh, all kinds of posts about how people can you know uh, get up and walk and uh, feel nature and all of that stuff and that will help you of course it will help but you know it lack of access to nature or la- lack of uh, spirituality etc that's or or you know just just someone not um, being able to see something positive that's not depression depression is a clinical illness and uh, it has more to do with just feelings of sadness this is just a lot more so that's something i always keep telling people that that let's be very clear about what is sadness and you know what can get a person who's probably uh, just feeling down on a particular day to get up and move and uh, how someone with depression how they can uh, manage their illness these two two completely different things and the second thing of course that that's something that arjun also mentioned that you know what worked for me may not work for anyone else and um we need to be very careful when dispensing advice even during uh, even if it's just peer support and uh, peer support and treatment these again also have to be very clearly defined and boundaries have to be made so that uh, people dishing out general advice that that that's not uh, actual therapy or counseling or even any kind of treatment so these are two things um, i always keep uh, mentioning in all my posts and of course the fact that um, depression is an illness you know it's, a, it's it's it has biopsychosocial origins and you really cannot uh, figure out exactly who will get it why they will get it what will be the trigger and therefore we don't know what kind of treatment is actually going to work for whom but we keep trying and and that is the 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 key message i think we keep trying know that help is available and of course we have uh, spoken in the past about uh, you know resources and privilege and access but that's something both of you are very very vocal about um shubhrata can you share with us some of the most common issues people come to you for they've heard you share your stories you've helped open up that space for other people what are some of the things that are coming up in everyday conversations uh, while of course keeping their anonymity but in terms of overarching themes uh amrita the f- the first thing that always uh you know i come across is the stigma there is very little understanding of mental illnesses even something as common as anxiety disorder or major depressive disorder and that uh a stigma you know that that lack of understanding kind of really uh makes people very uh, feel very ashamed of whatever they're going through so number one they find it very difficult to accept or to even acknowledge that they may be having depression or anxiety disorder so that's something that really you know a lot of people come to me they tell me that this is what i'm feeling do you think this is depression and then again i'm very careful to tell them that look i'm not a professional i cannot diagnose you but whatever you're saying seems like it might be depression so please do go and consult a psychiatrist or a psychologist and then that's the next part of it that you know the stigma uh, kind of uh, keeps people from going out and seeing a psychiatrist or a psychologist and uh, that is why even though a lot of people speak to me uh, in uh, private uh, they would kind of sometimes not even acknowledge that they know me and i see a lot of um, work that people do on different aspects of uh, you know uh, different social causes finding space in the common areas of whether it's work or family etc but not so much mental health because i do a lot of work and i want i, I don't work just to help people but uh, even people who come to me they 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 are, they are very careful that nobody should get to know that they're talking to me and those things are still there uh, you would be surprised to know this but it's there uh, although i always have an open door policy that please come in please come and have a cup of coffee and for some time i had thought that i could you know just put up a board outside my room that office room that this is a safe space for mental health conversations 
but then a couple of people who come to me said please don't do it because you know then uh, we we won't be able to come to you because uh, somebody will know that we are coming to you for this so that is the kind of stigma that exists uh, one of my colleagues told me that you know uh, she had to set up a separate amazon account to order my book and i think that's the the biggest problem the the biggest um, challenge that's the stigma that people you know just have to hide it and that's another message that i keep giving out that it's just okay to not be okay it's an illness it can happen to anyone no one should have to feel ashamed if they have anxiety disorder or depression you know arjun i saw you nodding uh, when shurata was talking about some of this the way people react to even uh, asking for help reaching out they don't want to be uh, you know by association linked sometimes uh, to these topics but you know i also do find uh, it's important for us to tell people that you know it's each of us that can tackle the stigma right it's one thing to have these conversations but how are we in our everyday right, lives how are we with people around us um you have uh, not only talked about your lived experience you're trained now as a psychologist arjun what are some of the things that you notice and are you finding that there's a generational uh, difference are younger people is it easier for them to come up to you um, so my um my experiences have been very different than the two cities that i am in so in hisar where i am right now it's a tier three city in haryana basically the heartland of haryana so there's a lot of stigma still here about talking to a psychologist visiting a psychologist i have lost some friends because i am a psychologist so as sutrata was mentioning that people don't want to associate associate with you because of you know what you do so that is something that happens here and um, in gurgaon where uh, i work most of the time there people are more accepting of uh, being a psychologist and talking to a psychologist i have had people actually reach out to me and tell me the the issues that they've been facing and they uh, say that they want therapy but they don't know where to go for it and they don't know how to access it so i think um, it is still an urban phenomena urban phenomena the acceptance of therapy is still um, located mostly in metro or uh, tier one cities there is still a lot of stigma attached to you know going to a therapist especially among young men even more so about going to a therapist so what i have to do is i have to go to them uh, the students that i work with i go to them and talk to them about what they're going through and that's when they uh, are more comfortable in opening up so yeah i think stigma is a, a huge burden uh, and a huge barrier to mental health care in india right now. and when you talking to um these uh, sort of younger uh, younger people arjun especially younger men uh, do you have to come at the subject sort of sideways is it often relationship related stress uh, anxiety depression family pressure what are some of the bigger bigger picture issues that come up when you're able to strike up that conversation so it's all, it almost always starts with relationship issues uh, so they feel like they're not heard enough in the relationships they feel like they're not a part of the relationship they're a, they're just an add on and it seems like a uh, Uh, the other person is taking up all the space and they don't know how to you know establish those boundaries uh, especially in the emotional space when it comes to a relationship but when you go deeper into it it's also a lot of anxiety about career about you know uh, the financial responsibilities that they'll have to take up uh, in the future so they know that they are expected to be the primary breadwinner of their family and uh, there's a lot of anxiety that comes with that will i be good enough for my parents will i be good enough for the people around me and uh, most of the time they keep it in because they have to they don't have anyone to talk to they're afraid of being ridiculed about for thinking about this stuff and those conversations are always tough but i feel like they're worth having they're always had uh, uh in the side corner because people don't want to you know come up straight to you and say that we want to talk about what we're going through they take you out they uh, want to have a coffee and then they want to talk about it. so i think uh, as as shubhrata was saying it it needs to be courted Uh, just to put on a show for the other people that it's not that serious but what's going on in people's head is usually a lot more serious than they let on yeah that is so true that is so true i mean what's going on is often so serious that it's really worth all that extra effort to kind of um bridge that gap make it easier for each other so let me ask you as we wind this down for the moment and i'm hoping we'll uh, you know do a few more chats uh, as this year progresses hopefully in person um, maybe with our pets just to lighten the mood <laughs> but um let me ask you arjun person and shubhrata one myth or misconception you'd like to bust and also one thing you're hoping that together collectively we can change whether it's tackling that stigma setting up peer support groups whatever you like um, one myth and one thing you'd want to change this year uh so i think one of the main things that uh, young men uh, face the issue with is they feel like therapy is uh, portrayed as some sort of you know 
fix all for them so they feel like they'll go to therapy and suddenly every problem of theirs will be solved but therapy is a huge process and the people who are in therapy have to take on um, actions on themselves as well and you have to take time to find the right therapist as well so it's as we have been talking about it's a journey that you have to go through you won't find the perfect therapist on the first go and um, you won't find the quick fix solution either you'll have to put in the effort you'll have to put in the hours but eventually it will be worth it and if i had to change one thing i would change um, the number of psychologists in tier 3 cities in india because i could use some support over here and uh, yeah that is a, that is a really good one genuine one i hope the right people are listening we'll make sure they are <laughs> shubhata <laughs> over to you okay so uh, the biggest myth that i want to uh, um, address here and challenge that as well is that depression is a choice it's it's just not it's not sadness you know it's it's not that someone is very sad and then they don't want to get out of bed in the state bed it's an illness it has so much to do with changes in your brain it has so much to do with you know and the brain controls the entire body so people somehow seem to think that all our behavior all our thoughts are somehow divorced from our brain which is not true the brain is the master of all so if something is uh, wrong with our thoughts and behavior naturally something has happened in the brain now as of now of course we don't know exactly what happens uh the studies are going on i don't know how much um uh, we'll get to see on that in our lives lifetimes maybe we will but uh this is a big big myth people just think that it's a choice it's not a choice and i think this choice theory probably uh is something that drives that stigma quite a bit and one thing that if um if i had the chance i would like to change is get people to know about this get people to acknowledge this because what happens is the moment you talk about mental health no one wants to talk about it nobody even wants to i mean you can deal we keep having these conversations uh, i keep writing articles we, need, we we keep putting up blog posts no one reads those because nobody wants to touch mental health even with a barge pole that's how bad it is because if people would read there is so much of information about how depression is not a choice and people are just not open to reading about it because uh, and i i also get this joining a little bit of the peer support that Uh, someone feels low someone may actually have depression of course i cannot say that for sure because i cannot um, you know diagnose but i feel that they have depression and then i tell them and they talk to me and then you know they they get better for some time maybe the the symptoms uh, go go away after a while and they they kind of look down on me that okay i got better it was nothing kuch nahi tha and then i know i feel bad when i uh, when this happens not for myself but for them because having seen depression so close up i know it's going to come again we all know that anyone who has it once very likely chances they will get it again and this kind of attitude that okay photo it was nothing i i got over it i'm so brave that's that's not the way it is you know the, really? the strength <laughs> yeah it's a little bit of denial also right because you want to be like it's done it's over absolutely um, you don't i will i will disagree with you on on one thing respectfully people are reading i will tell you that people have written to me about articles you've written on our site they will tell us a year later so there's no way i can use this in our analytics in our you know super successful whatever people come back much later to say and usually you're right it's usually when they they've come through what they had to come through or they'll come quietly and say like you know it's never a uh, open display of love and affection but it's more like someone was going through something i sent them that article or that book or that piece so i want you to keep heart i think that you know you should Thank know you. and i've Thank seen responses to your tweets so i've also that i will show you the better i've seen people telling you it makes a difference and arjun similarly for you i know it's uh, it must feel very lonely um you know it's amazing that you are in hisar you're practicing in haryana we talk a lot about the uh, you know access to resources and help and you're walking that talk so please feel free to reach out anytime um you know through the health collective tribe as shubhata called it a few years ago um through the community we have your back anything we can do to support you you both are doing an incredible job so thank you thanks so much okay. i'll just i'll just keep uh rehearing what you just said over and over again through for the day <laughs> yes absolutely we'll do this again though in person we'll come to you don't worry <laughs> yes even thank right. you both so much it is uh it's not easy and i think again for anyone who watches this later and we'll clip out some of these clips we'll put the quotes up just know that there are other people going through very similar experiences you're not alone it sometimes feels like 
you're in your own silo and that nobody else understands, but other people are going through very similar struggles. So please know that help is available. Thank you both so much, Subrata and Arjun, for taking out time and thank you for what you do. Thank, thank you. you.